Singapore set to have a new science centre by 2020. A steering committee has been given the task of looking into its conceptualisation and it will be visiting several science centres overseas later this month to tap on their experience. In this week's Spotlight, Hetty Mosfera explores the role of the science centre and how that is set to evolve. Herman Ru dreams of becoming a science researcher. She's gearing up for the role by volunteering with the Science Center. For the 16-year-old, it's also a chance to share and deepen her knowledge in the field. It's more interactive than as compared to a, a classroom. For example, the, in the classroom, we'll sit in the chairs and then we'll listen to the teacher say, so this is why sound is produced. But in Science Center, when we come here, we can experiment on our own. We can see the results for our own. Wan Ru was one of close to 2,000 students that took part in a volunteering program with the Science Centre last year. The program aims to stimulate their interest in science and related careers. That's just one objective that the Science Centre has set out to achieve since its early days. Built at a cost of $20 million, the centre in Jurong was officially opened in December 1977 by the late Toh Chin Chai, who was then minister in charge of the Science Centre Board. The centre sought to become a custodian of creativity and innovation and was built at a time when Singapore was industrialising rapidly. By its second year, it was named one of the world's best science centres. While the exterior of the Science Centre has largely remained the same over the years, the centre has actually undergone several refurbishments and upgrading projects. It has become an institution not just to learn science, but also an attraction that has drawn over a million visitors annually at its peak. Today, the centre has 250 staff and boasts 14 galleries, covering all things related to science, technology and mathematics. But it faces competition from other attractions. A few years, we were among the top five attractions in Singapore. But uh, after uh, the Marina Bay Sands opened with its own uh, attractions, with Sentosa opened up the uh, uh, South Asia Aquariums uh, and then with the, the River Safari coming out we then dropped from uh, annually 1 million visitors to below 1 million uh, we are trying to recover from that uh, but that never stopped us from our conviction, from our passion from us coming up with creative ideas to re-innovate That passion is set to burn as the centre gears up for a makeover when it moves to a new site. Envisioned to become the jewel in Jurong, the centre will be located beside the Chinese Garden MRT station and be integrated into the Jurong Lake Gardens. A steering committee has been tasked to look into the areas such as programming, exhibitions and infrastructure. Science has moved on as well over the last you know, 10, 20, 30 years. Today, for example, you've got a whole field of uh, nanoscience, nanomaterials. That was not even a name when this original science centre was first built. You've got more and more genomic information and then a better understanding of how it interacts, for example, with diseases. We want to inspire young people to understand science and technology, to perhaps pursue a career in it. You know, or just to you know, motivate their sense of curiosity. The committee members are heading to world-renowned science centres in the US and Europe to tap on their knowledge. The Exploratorium was one that I saw in San Francisco and that was the old uh, site and they have uh, uh, recently moved to the new site and uh, which is the same thinking we have. We want to learn from the experience as they move uh, to a new venue, what are some of the considerations and different science center or museum that we are visiting in U.S. has different focuses. Uh, so the intention is also to really appreciate what are their, as they think through to staying relevant uh, and conceptualizing their uh, new science center and refreshing their new museum. Uh, what are some of the areas that we could potentially learn from? 
But in coming up with its recommendations by the end of 2015, the committee also wants to involve Singaporeans and know what they'll like to see. More activities uh, cater for younger kids uh, below five years old uh, so that they can actually enjoy uh, the place better and learn uh, before they actually enter primary school. The topic on climate change they'll never get old. Something that the kids can start learning as soon as they are young. Something a bit more interactive for them so it's easier for them to understand. Then um, basic science that you need to know. There are ideas that you know we should begin to showcase and make people understand what artificial intelligence is all about because that is increasingly an important part of our society. The area of food science because that is also becoming increasingly important. You know, ideas about perhaps we should have exhibits on vertical farming and then serve the vegetables in the cafeteria. <laughs> so, so there's no shortage of ideas. The current team at the Science Centre 2 is already test bedding concepts, which it hopes will continue in the new Science Centre. Well, over the years, the Science Centre has been developing more interactive exhibits to make the learning of science engaging, interesting and more fun. Now, one of them is this one, which allows you to learn about the human body. Now, all you have to do is step right in. Your brain is made of approximately 100 billion nerve cells called new. Well, as you can see, it's an immersive experience. Now, that's one aspect that will be further developed at the new Science Centre. Or you can use very uh, augmented reality kind of things. You can read storybooks with images coming on, on live. When you wave your hand, you can actually interact with, let's say, a giant dolphin swimming towards you. Very excited that there's going to be a new science centre. And while the student community look into planning for the new one, we on the current track will continue to harness our creative ideas to test bait. Visitors to the new science centre can also expect their experience to begin even before they enter the building. This is no different, for example, from the way, uh, say, a theme park may try to create that experience. You may arrive there and the entrance is a long way away, but you've already started your experience because you'll be briefed along the way about what to expect, you know, what are the attractions that you can see, so we don't wait until you arrive at the door. So the wheels have been set in motion to reinvent the Science Centre and what it offers. Now the steering committee says one clear aim that it seeks to achieve is for it to become a place that all Singaporeans can be proud of.